To Dario, wow, it seems like your engineers are always figuring out new alloys and new types of strings. It's a company that folds in environmentalism, and recycled packaging, and all of that feels good. But the bottom line, the strings are good. Hey y'all, this is Perry with Premier Guitar here at the Ryman Auditorium in Nashville, Tennessee with a good buddy, Jason Isbell. Hey folks, this is Michael Bethencourt. Michael back and forth, if he, you've watched some of our other... He goes <laughs> back and guys. forth a lot. Yeah. He's my guitar man. He's my guitar man. Guitar man. We got guitars. <laughs> uh, let's see, shall we start over here? Well, Should we start over here? Well, Where do you want to go? We'll start with guitars. Let's but do be guitars. Before that, the last time we talked was yep. pre-pandemic. Yep. You're up to four Grammys. Yep. You got a movie that just came out. I can't wait to see. I can't talk about it. I'm going to strike. But <laughs> if you find yourself at the movies and you happen to see me, please enjoy yourself. I cannot wait to find myself at the movies yeah. so that I may enjoy myself. That, it just looks incredible. The trailers were blowing my mind. Yeah. So. Yeah. Big, big fan of that sort of thing. But um, congrats. Thank you. Not only did you get Red Eye, now you got some other really cool additions to the I got some other rig. cool guitars, yes, and I haven't had to sell Red Eye yet. So now that, 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 that's really all I'm looking for out of this whole life is to not have to sell that guitar. I think you're on a, on a good trajectory. I'm working on it, yeah. Everybody says that I, if, if I go completely broke, I'll just be in a field with a tent and that <laughs> guitar and a can of beans, and that's all I have left. But if it comes to that, it comes to yeah. that. But, um, well, where should we start? Let's I mean, start over here. So I want to show you something cool. This is my signature Telecaster, the Jason is model fender telecaster it's got right here my tattoo um, that we sort of use as our logo and mm -hmm. it's a little bit relict and it's kind of like a 5960 uh, custom telecaster except we put a black pick guard on it and then the the pickups are are exclusive to this instrument and this one's based on this bridge pickup from this uh, 65 tele which is bizarre so I have to show you this before this guitar makes sense but Somebody, apparently, one one day this pickup came unwound. I think we were here one year we? ago. Yeah. yeah, a year ago. With Michael the, took it over to pumped. Tim Shaw, yeah, and Tim got to looking at this, and Tim was like, "This is one of the weirdest things I've ever seen." So if you'll notice, the poles are flat. So somebody back in the '60s got this guitar and and thought they needed flat poles and just took a mallet, shaved them down, and or hit hammered them. them down. And when they did, it caused the bottom of the pickup to come loose. And then also, um, is it the shielding that's missing or they didn't pot it all the they way? They didn't pot it all the way. So it's huh. extremely microphonic. So like if it's plugged in, you can hear so loud when you tap on the pick guard. But I really love that sound. The pickup is super hot and um, it's super microphonic. So like if you're in the studio for like whaling country stuff, it sounds great. Or if you like crank it and rock with it, it handles that really well. But it's just an accident. That's a beautiful know? mistake, man. Yeah, and, and that's what they patterned that bridge pickup on. Did they take and, it apart uh, to look and see how the... Yeah, yeah. That's and, interesting. Uh, and, and put it back as close to the way it was as possible. Tim's like, I'm not going to fix this all mm -hmm. the way because right. it sounds unique, you know. And then the neck profile came from this guitar also. Uh, and then Recently, we've got a song called Death Wish on the new album on Weather Vane. Killer single. I Love. Played, Congrats on the new record, by the thank way. Thank you so much. And the much. nomination. Thank you. I played a baritone, uh, so I had Fender put a baritone neck on the signature Telecaster, which I think Fender can put a berry neck on just about any new it's the same tele pocket, body. Right? Yeah, yeah, same pocket. And it intonates great, stays in tune, and sounds really, really good with those tele pickups. Just because I'm noticing right out of the gate, it's a berry, but what, that's a looks like a very manly gauge. <laughs> yeah, it's a big berry gauge. Okay. This is not a this is not for the blues, you know. This is <laughs> yeah, no. this is when you're not gonna bend anything, <laughs> no. you know. Um, yeah. thirteen to uh, seven. It's like a hundred pound 13. compound bow. Yeah, it's pretty yeah. stout, but um it sounds so cool, you know, and a berry is like playing something sort of modern on a baritone makes me really happy. Um, really fun. And then here's the old 335, uh, 61 dot neck. This was the first really good vintage guitar that I got. I got it from Dave Cobb and he immediately regretted selling it to sure. me. 
But this one, besides frets and tuners, pretty much stock. Didn't he go out and buy almost the identical one? He didn't one? even go in the house. Yeah, he went, he took the money and went <laughs> directly to the guitar store and bought one almost just like yeah. that one um, that he kept for a long time. I think he traded it in on another 335, actually. I can relate. That feeling is awful when you sell a piece of gear and immediately say, oh, Yeah, shit. and Dave, you know, he's a super nice guy, so sometimes he'll be like, man, I'll take whatever for it. And then afterward, he's like, ah, I should not have done it. Yeah. You can see there's a picture of us when his face is just, he's so sad. <laughs> just crestfallen. <laughs> and then over here, we got some Telecasters. This is the 53 Blackguard. Oh, um, yeah. And it was super clean last time y'all saw it. Uh, I have roughed it up a little bit, but it's all my own wear, which makes me really happy. Like this spot here and wow, most I've of these. I've never noticed how thin it gets right yes, here. Yes, it does, wild. yeah. And I mean, you know, the 65 is not that way. No, like no, when no. they, after they transition to the veneer, they change this angle. A little more beef So on a lot thing. of tele players back in the day would put those little weights, you know, they would clip those little like chrome plated metal weights right here huh. to, to add a little bit of mass to the headstock. But in 65, up until about halfway through the year, there's a little bit more meat right here. And some people think that sounds better. Interesting. Um, it's definitely different. It's a little thicker and it sustains a little more. But this is just your flat pole black guard and it sounds exactly like you would expect. And still got the old three-way wiring with the base cap on the uh -huh. front, you know, almost useless. Um, <laughs> but it's, it's old school. And the frets, when I got it, it had original frets on it and it had never been apart. The, the, the neck had never been off the body, so it still had the old neck angle with mm. these suckers sticking way up, way up. you know. And, cut uh, your hand up. Yeah, yeah, so all I've done is, is had frets put on it and then played the hell out of it. And it's starting to get wear from my hands, which is kind of an incredible um, privilege to have a guitar that's this old that still feels like it's yours and not somebody, you know, who played it long before you were yeah. born. Um, I love that guitar, and more recently I got this guy in uh, Emerald City, is that right? Yeah, this came from Seattle. Mm -hmm. um, this is a 54, so they transitioned the pit guard color, but not really much else. The finish is really similar, and it's still got your flat pole bridge pickup. This one's been played quite a bit, um, but this one I call the Winter Soldier, because as Michael discovered over the summer, um, when the finish sort of wears off of these fender necks, the humidity will soak in. And it got to the point where the truss rod wasn't cutting it anymore. So we had to take it out, you know, take it off the road and let it sort of dehumidify and get it back right. And then- Throw it on top probably, of a pizza oven or something? How'd you, how'd you get it to suck out? I won't be bringing it, well, we'll yeah. put it in a dehumidifier. Totally. I won't be bringing it out in the summertime anymore. This will be an indoor. Which is wild, because this neck seems real thick to me. Yeah. It's thick, but the finish is gone. Yeah. So it just leaves it open. Yeah. And it starts to starts to move, but it sounds fantastic. And it's really fun to play. And this one's got a little bit more space uh, between the E string and the bottom of the fingerboard. That one there, if I'm not careful, pop it down. I'll pop it off. Yeah. yeah. But this one's a little more comfortable and it's got a slight V almost. They're yeah. like just about to get into that. You it's know? played for sure. Yeah. I do love you, this. Do you guitar. know what happened back uh, on the back side of it? It's got an interesting mark. I know. That's weird, isn't it? Yeah. I don't know. Huh. Maybe a stand. Somebody used a stand. It looks like a stand with a t shirt that was indigo dyed. <laughs> and they hadn't washed the t-shirt yet and they put mm. it over a guitar stand and then put the guitar in the guitar stand. Mm. That's what I'm going to tell myself happened, but <laughs> anyway. And then uh, uh, Baltimore, well, uh, Garrett Park guitars in Maryland. I got this from them and this is a 58 with 57 features. So it's got a V neck and uh, a little bit more of the 57 sunbursts, the real it's thin. thin. Yeah. yeah. Well, how almost lemony. Yeah, yeah, man, this is, you know, 57 is kind of the year for these. So this one I got, it was a little bit less expensive than a 57 would have been, and it does all the same things. And it's certainly been played, but not abused. Um, and, you know, it's great because it's that bright 
super trebly strat sound right. for finger style stuff like this one i had the five-way switch put in uh, because that out of phase spot is just perfect on cool. this guitar and and it doesn't have Plus the that slab gives you, that allows you to have a, a tone control on the on yes the, yeah. exactly yeah and it doesn't have the slab like this one this is a 60 and this is this one i've had for quite a while this is kind of yeah. my main strat but you know it softens up so like the this this pickup on this guitar is magic you know it's stevie ray and it's hendrix and it's all that um but the slab definitely has a different sonic quality than mm. the, just the maple neck but yeah this guitar sees a lot of action i play this one a lot this is kind of like the one i dreamed of when i was a little kid you know somebody put a snark on it you yeah, gotta we watch talked about that. We did. yeah yeah you yeah. gotta watch those stickers are on the outside and then here is the uh the gold top, this one has seen a great deal of use, especially on weather vanes on the new God, record. What a beautiful guitar. This guitar is so fun. This one came from Tom Crandall's shop in New York. And uh, yeah, never been broken. What year was it? 53. And I think this was the one that uh, Larry Craig did for Jason over at uh, Fretboard Journal, I think. He did a piece on Larry and talked him into putting this bridge on sure. it, you know. The crazy thing about this is that bridge has got to go so low, low. that you're just it's almost sunken. yeah, yeah. So uh, it sounds great. I mean, this one, this is kind of the sleeper hit of the whole rig. Yeah. It, it got so much use on that last record, and you know you can do everything from real stratty kind of Gilmore sounds to you know Mark Ford Black Crow's fuzziness to everything in between. Man, I love these. Early gold tops once they start cracking yeah. the green in there. So that, yeah, that oxidizes. Yeah, I love it. And it feels so good. Like, yeah, this is really good for like macro, like close up photos. These guitars yeah. always look so cool. Now, um, are you having to tweak on these quite a bit or are they all pretty hunkered in? Uh, I mean, they're all pretty close. This month um, it's not so bad, right? Yeah, this month is great. You know, it's summertime, it gets it gets a little wild. Dead uh, of winter, I'm sure. With humidity too, yeah. changes and. Yeah. Um, we played a lot of outdoor shows this summer, yeah. and yeah. it was rough on some of those. It's hot, but yeah, they're kind of settled in right now. Mm -hmm. Feel like it. Oh, 61. Yeah, 61, huh? Yeah. Um, Do you keep kinda, this just pinned down? Yeah, yeah, that's useless, blocked. Right? Yeah, it's good for weight. It's I've good for heard, balancing. Well, I, man, I've heard some arguments that that might do something just well, for the mass of it. Like, I mean, it sustain. definitely keeps these from being as headstock heavy yeah. as they tend to be. If you put an ABR on there, sometimes it gets like cool. this. Yeah. yeah. Um, I don't know about sustain. I just love how it sounds. I don't know if it's because of this or yeah. just a combination of all the parts, but it's got a good thin, wide neck. You know, the 61, the Pretty speed flat neck radius. is yeah, flat. You're screaming you on can that haul thing. ass on it. And you know, the top's kind of gone to the hamburger meat and the back's still pretty red. Yeah. And this one, you know, it's interesting to me because it's very clear that somebody has played this guitar a lot and they have played probably a lot of lead guitar yeah. on here because right in here right is the way. Yeah. But they never dropped it. Nope. Never knocked it off a stand. No heel crack, no neck crack. Maybe you know, what, what year did uh, Gibson start doing the, the volute? Because I feel like those really helped yeah, the I neck think stability. Yeah, you know. I don't know. When did they start doing that? 70s? I've seen some sure. pretty early guitars that have that but I, some of them I think may have been like repairs yeah. right that people Where somebody sent added. back and they put it on there sure. at the factory I've always loved it I, I like the way it looks I think it it's looks cool. great yeah. yeah it looks super cool like stingers and volutes are here's a here's a crazy slick. one this is not one that you uh, normally see 1960 Ooh. this is a red beauty one of I think six I was gonna made. say this is the only one I've ever seen Gary Gand has one Neil Sean had one and he I think recently sold it at auction and there's a couple more out there, but um, the story is that Hagstrom ordered these for their shop in Sweden. I think they got like three and 59 and three and 60 and got them this color to match that Hagstrom red. And I think Gibson had been putting this on mandolins uh, before that, like in the 50s, and they just made a few guitars like this. Um, but it was supposed to be a Black Beauty and they just factory yeah. red. And in 1960, and this one also doesn't have a headstock break. It still had the fretless wonder frets on it when I got it, so I had to do something about that. Sure. Um, They'd just been chewed all the way down, huh? Yeah, yeah, and they were gone to start with. You know, they thought that would be faster. And it was if you weren't bending any strings. If you're playing like Les Paul or something, it worked pretty well. Right. But you can't, you can't start bending on that. Yeah. yeah. Or um, imagine even slide. sometimes you're, you're hitting. You oh, know, yeah. Clicking yeah. it. Yeah. 
but this guitar is cool you know That's it doesn't have cool. the doesn't have the maple cap so it doesn't have that brightness that a standard les paul has um but man this neck pickup is very bright and sounds really good by itself with a little drive it's heavy i don't know we were talking last night about either this one or the gold top are my heaviest yeah. les pauls they're about the same are we, yeah. are we in yeah. 10 pound territory yet i think probably we're creeping 12. up on 11. yeah, yeah. Damn, really? i they're, think probably 11. well that yeah. extra pickup too they're, probably they're pretty beefy yeah. yeah they both have a little bit of extra metal on them little and then here the is the uh here's the the, oh. the the crown jewel that's the red eye you know what i didn't notice last the last time, time is Obviously, where the tag was, yeah. you know, it, it, the color stayed, but also under the yep, under and under the, the knob. If you really the look close, shadow. Yeah. Like almost looks rings. like brisket under there. Or yeah, <laughs> yeah, oh. yep. But it's still doing what it's supposed to do. I this one doesn't move on. much. It's no, funny. No, this, very this stays in place. You know, it's been one piece for so long. Oh. Um, there's a few little scratches that I did. I remember when I did them. Uh, some of these right here were like at the Levitt Shell in Memphis. And I had some sharp buttons, uh, and, you know, but it's mine. At least I didn't knock it down and break it, you know. And then lately, I've been using these Martin Triple O's, um, Triple O 28s. Uh, these is, this is what I've been using live, and they're like ready. the modern deluxe series. Um, and they stay in tune, they sound good, they got a nice mid-range punch to cut through a full band. Um, I love that Martin herringbone. Too. Isn't it it's beautiful? So sexy. Yeah. I've got the real thing at home. The, it's a 34. Right. And uh, it it's unbelievable. Like it sounds like like we couldn't be talking if I was just strumming. You could hear it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's just it's, it's really loud. irritatingly loud. It's a beautifully made instrument. I love how they do right. the little diamond. Volume yeah, too. that's like, really that's good. That's such a 30s appointment. Yep. And this is the number one. So we keep this one down a half step for a couple songs, and then we've got another one just like it. It goes backup. in standard. And then this is cool. This is pretty new. This is the Super Dreadnought. I say that looks big. This is a big boy. It's like 30% larger than uh, a normal Dreadnought, which is cool because it, it makes me feel like a normal size human. You yeah. Know? And that low end is big I'm and sure. boomy. Um, yeah, this is a cool guitar. Yeah. It's, it's loud. You know, early on they thought those Dreadnoughts were too loud you know the ditsons and stuff they they didn't go for it because they're like that's going to drown out everybody else on stage but as we've discovered everything else has gotten much louder and sure the great big guitar just looks cool and sounds cool and the way they did the herringbone on this with like the it's wood grain in the middle unbelievable it looks yeah. really cool yeah and then check out the, the the book match on the back let's yeah because that's such i love how they do this strip yeah here. the three piece yeah yeah, so I guess this would be... Well, they must have had to do the three-piece because it's such a big, big Yeah, right, exactly. Yeah, you couldn't just do two pieces, so you have to do like a 35-style back right. for it. Um, it's like a 28 on top and a 35 on the back. O open back tuners. Mm -hmm. Very yeah. cool. Yeah, and I mean, it is a big, loud guitar. It's super fun. And I just love the, the width of the grain on the top on this one. That's a really nice piece of whatever sort of maple. Yeah. Okay, or spruce. Very, very cool. Yeah, it's probably spruce, what Adirondack, yeah. I imagine. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I think this is EIR. Kind of looks like it. Looks like maybe EIR and maybe Madagascar in the middle. Maybe. Yeah, but that's a beautiful work. Yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah, when we, last time we went, I saw one hanging up and I was like, what the hell is that? You know, and Fred was like, that's the, that's the super dreadnought. I was like, y'all got to send me one of those. Super dreadnought. Yeah, I want to feel like little Jimmy Dickens you know, <laughs> and hiding behind a huge guitar. Well, man, you do not have a, a bad collection, my friend. Um, it's super fun, you know. I, Michael and I both sort of call it a, just a really good toolbox because sure. I use them. And, and uh, you know, and they all sort of, I don't have multiple copies of the same guitar. They right. all do something a little bit different, you know. Um, so, yeah, if, if there's a sound that pops in my head that I need, I can pretty much find it, you know, unless it's like I have a Steinberger out on the road too if i really need to dive bomb or something yeah headless the whole I, thing oh yeah is it here <laughs> he, dave may have it around You're dave? you actually have one yeah oh that's funny hey dave is the steinberger here yeah. let me see it so yeah this is it real I deal i honestly thought you were fucking with me no i'm not kidding it's just like <laughs> 
84 maybe 85 oh and this my was God. like the og all i could think of when i see this is the outfield video oh for... i know, <laughs> you know like... yeah but this is uh do you from... never just come off the end of it because it would throw me off without a headstock yeah, oh, totally. yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah yeah it's real weird but it stays in tune and it actually sounds a lot like a les paul weird. and this was one of the ones that was sold through that dealer in Las Vegas that was doing like the original shipments of them in the 80s. And it's got the Moses graphite yeah. add-on neck, you know. And yeah, I was in Oklahoma working on that project that I cannot mention because I'm on strike. Um, and I went to a local guitar store there in Tulsa and they had this. And I was like, I think, I'm, I, think I need that, you know. So I sat around and played it in my Airbnb all summer. It's super fun. Man. Yeah. Nothing Steinberg. nothing says Americana like this guitar. Exactly, right? You, you know what you right? need is a is a Parker fly. Yeah. <laughs> you, I know, you can really I know. come full circle. I'll get one of Reeves' yeah. old Parker fly that he decorated with uh, crazy stuff. Yeah, it looks so funny. Oh that was a, that, that's a cool guitar. That was a fun little surprise. That's a surprise there. for you. Yeah, yeah the Steinberger. Hey, appreciate it. Yeah. So that was a super fun surprise. I love that. Uh, yeah. uh, I I gotta ask due diligence, uh picks uh strings picks gauges before picks, we leave. Strings. I had wait. Here's a pack of strings right here. Ooh. I keep them under my armpit just for emergency. <laughs> These are your Ernie Ball regular slinkies. I remember when my name went on the back of the pack, I was very oh. proud. But I have used Ernie Ball 10 since I was probably eight years old, nine oh, years wow. old. Yeah, yeah. And, and they stay in tune. They're not too expensive. And I know exactly what they're gonna do. Sure. Um, yeah, what about, what about acoustics? acoustics? Oh, acoustics. <laughs> what? Hello. Hello. Get yourself a tech that has acoustic strings <laughs> yeah. hidden in his armpit. Yeah, just the, uh, I mean, I think they used to call these SP at some point. Right. These the are Lifespan yeah, yeah. 2.0. Medium yeah. gauge. 13 to 56. Got to fight with it just a little bit, but just not too much. Yeah. yeah. Well, heck yeah. Let's go take a look at uh, some beautiful new additions to the amp land. Yeah, let's look at amps. All right. Let's do it. So uh, I see some familiar faces, but let's just talk about the elephant in the room here. Yeah. Not only do you have one of the most incredible rare guitars on the planet, this is uh, number 22, I Number hear. 22, yeah. Good Lord. It was Dennis Herring's, made for Dennis, when he was Studio playing okay. with Bonnie Raitt. Yeah. Well, he was touring with Bonnie oh, in the okay. 70s, and then he wound up becoming a really great producer and did a lot of awesome records. Uh, Modest Mouse and Cracker, sure. Camper Van Beethoven, and you know, just cool stuff like yeah. that. And uh, this was, I guess, his main guitar amp in the studio. Number 22. Yeah, nobody's back up. Pretty early, right? <laughs> and I think this is the first, there's a presence knob on the back, right next to the uh, standby switch. And then there's a master volume here. And it looks to me like Dumble didn't have room to put his Overdrive Special sticker Ooh, because of, because because of the adding master. that at the last minute. And I think if you look, all the ODSs afterward had a master and a presence knob. So he must have liked that That's feature. What it did. Yeah. yeah. Um, but you know, I mean, people have said all kinds of crazy stuff about these and yeah, I mean, part of it is like sort of the baggage that you bring into playing through an amp or with a guitar like that. But that also counts for me, you know, like when I go into a big studio and I think, well, this record was made here, that record was made here, I better do something worth a damn. You know, and if you're on stage with this and a 1959 Les Paul and you don't know what you're doing, it's gonna be really embarrassing for you I, so you have to step up the game right. you know um but it just sounds perfect i mean there, there's so much uh note even when it's really driven you know and there's so much clarity and you know the fact that he uses like the 200 watt ev speaker means that everything's coming from the circuit so like you know, the, the designer, Dumble himself, is in control of everything that you're hearing. He's not overdriving a speaker, so you don't have to worry about finding oh, the right... 200 watts. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, all the rest of these, the marshals and everything, they work on a lower wattage speaker than what you're pushing through it, and that creates some of your drive. Right. But this one doesn't, so you can just get so much more clarity, you know, because you have a clean tone. Like, if this, if this clean volume knob goes all the way off, even if you're on the drive channel, you don't hear anything at all. Huh. So you have to have the clean volume up and then you add the drive on top of that. And I think it really makes a difference to the clarity of the, of the amp. Michael um, figured out how to get this in the rig and you know we turn that cabinet around back. We don't, we don't uh, attenuate this one, do we? We don't, no. Yeah. The, the we'll master is good enough that we just don't really sure. have to. That's the only one we don't attenuate, I think. Yep. So um, just because, I mean, 
these are so rare, mm -hmm. and obviously now a very finite. Yeah. Uh, amp, you know. Yeah. What, all right, so for example, like I've seen them, but like, what are the, what are, it's a bright switch, a deep switch, yeah, and guitar and mic. Was yes. he making these to sing through? Well, I think maybe initially that like was a, sort like of an PA idea, hat? but uh, that switch became it kept the same function, but it got a different label later. Oh, uh, okay. You know, it became like a rock switch. Oh, so same like, circuit, just yeah, a like different. blues or rock, oh, okay. basically. Yeah, no jazz or oh, rock. Okay. That's what it turned into, but it's the same <laughs> circuit. Um, but yeah, what else can you say, Michael? You figured out how to get the channel switching to work with the MIDI rig. Yeah, that was pretty pretty inventive of you. That was a fun one. Uh, how, how did you figure that one out? Uh, I mean, it's it's just a four pin XLR going to the back, which was you know, obviously those are fun to find, but uh, uh, you know on the road anyway, you don't see yeah. a whole lot of them in the wild. But um, you know, it was my main concern is that on the foot switch they were sending voltage down the line to hit the LED on the foot switch, which you also can't get to the guts of because... Right. It's carved out of wood. Because it's carved out of wood. Yeah, he just made it out of a piece of wood. Yeah. My yeah. man. So yeah. the foot switch well, was a mystery, and I, you know, I needed to do something with the voltage that was coming down for the LED. So I, you know, where it hits the rack, there's an LED back there that's burning off that power, and, you know, everything else is just, uh, you know, I use a function switch on one of the RJM su uh, switchers to trigger it. It's yeah. all relay based inside the amp, so it's pretty easy. Does that just make you nervous having it out? No, it made me nervous if some ding dong had it yeah, out. Yeah, no, I get that, but like. It's <laughs> like, I know I know what I have, and I also know that it's gonna have to be repaired at some point. This is pre-goop, which is nice. It's That's nice. It's before you started epoxying everything. Um, and there are people here in town who have had them, you know, custom made for them, who now, people like Todd Sharp, who builds his own amps now, and he's had a bunch of these. and. There are people, if you can't find somebody to fix your amp in Nashville, it's not going to last you very long anyway. Right. Um, uh, no, it doesn't make me nervous, man. I love it. I love oh. it. I'm not going to, you know, dream my whole life of having the cool stuff and then freak out when I get it. Yeah. It's just, you just don't drop it. I guess you know? nobody buys a Maserati <laughs> to not drive it. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, yeah. some people probably yeah, do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but yeah, <laughs> yeah. I like my car has got four doors. I don't I don't need a boat. I don't need, you know, this is the kind of stuff that I want. Right. And uh, it makes me happy, you know. It it we play a lot of shows and if you're not careful, if you don't like challenge yourself in some way or do something for you, you might get bored with even the best sure. job and the best band and I don't want that to ever happen. Um, and I'm lucky enough to be able to get some of this kind of gear. So I get it and I bring it on tour and I use it and then every night it's like, oh, I'm not going to be bored. I got this, right. this amp. I got this guitar, you know. So I, there's just so much mystique behind these. Mm -hmm. What do you notice about this amp, you know, whether it's feel or, you know, response or sound that is unlike other amps, you know? To me, I mean, I know there's a lot of stuff that I don't understand about how the circuit is designed. Sure, sure. But to me, the difference comes from getting everything out of here rather than relying on the instability of the speaker. Because a lot of what's, you know, when the car, fe when the amp fell off of Jackie Brinston's car and, you know, and, and rock and roll was born, that was because of a ripped speaker. speaker. And had it ripped in a different way, it wouldn't have sounded as cool. Right. And up until this point, really, everybody had depended on either uh, overdriving the speaker or, or using something for a way in which it was not designed, you know, like the Wurlitzer effect, sure. um, or using a pedal, you know, which Dumble also kind of had a hand in the early fuzz pedals, right. you know. Um, but this, you ha it's controlled, like it does what it's supposed to do. I could put any 200 watt speaker and it would sound pretty close to the same. Um, and I just hear so much note, you yeah. know, and like with, with the Gibsons especially, I can play a note standing up there at the mic and it happens every night. Like I, if I step in a certain direction, I'll get the right overtone. Uh -huh. And if I turn a little too close to it, it's going to hurt everybody in the band. And they look at me like, "Come on, asshole!" Yeah. You yeah. know. Do you but, have a, a guitar that you prefer? Like, is is Red Eye like a guitar that you love hearing through that amp, or? All of them are real good through that amp. I'm going to be honest with you. A Strat through a Dumble is a pretty special thing, though. Yeah. And I think that's probably what Dennis was playing a Fender of some sort when, with Bonnie? when sure, Dumble yeah. built that for him. So that's, the Fender's really sort of saying. I mean, the red eye through a Marshall is, there's not it's another, also rock and roll. there's yeah. not another percent, you no. know, that you're gonna get out of that. But a Strat, there's a lot of nuances and, and 
this thing seems to clean up and sort of capture all of them, you know. Ugh. And then right. very often I use the combo of the twin and the uh, vibroverb. Um, this is one of those high powered 80 watt twins. So yeah. it's, it's definitely, you know, we've got it attenuated. Oh, yeah, because if not, to. this thing would put, Peel like, the paint off the and walls. make all these sound like that champ. This is the loudest damn thing on earth. Like I can't be in the room with it at home without an attenuator. 80 it watts hurts. is just insane. Through that small, it's like a weapon, you know? Like we saw the stones at Roskilde <laughs> and Keith weapon. had two of those. And I swear I could hear stage volume at a Rolling Stones show. Insane. Two, just with two of these. How close were you? Were you Not side stage? Not very, no, well, I was out front. God dang And I know I could hear the difference between his amps and what was coming, coming through, through the PA. PA for sure. You know, and he had that like, uh, you know, he's playing macabre, so he had that like, uh, um, lap steel pickup with the blend circuit so he, he you know that's the trick to that guitar is he's got the paf and then that uh lap steel pickup and he blends the two oh, and it's not a tone knob it's that like early 50s blend one circuit. or the other yeah, yeah. so you kind of mix it in a little gotcha bit. but i could hear st those things are so loud and then the magnetones we've been working with them for quite a while now you guys do have a kind of interesting setup you worked with magnetone on this right yeah, yeah tell them about are, it michael these are cool they uh i mean Jason and I kind of figured out we wanted to do a big stereo wet dry wet kind of thing and you know in my head it was going to be what what some of the guys in the 70s and 80s that were building stuff for Gilmore and, and guys like that I kind of wanted to do what technology was never really able to afford them right um, you know whether it being like EQ or, or presets on analog delays stuff like that um, but I also knew that I wanted to be able to take the wet signal and swirl it around and make people want to throw up and trip out. Mm -hmm. So I worked with Obed Khan, who's a, an engineer in St. Louis that's worked with Magnetone for a good long while. And, uh, you know, he came up with a way to do it. We basically hijacked the LFO uh, out of one side or out of one of the Magnetones and we dump it over to the other one and, uh, you know, out of phase. And uh, uh, so it's a, it's a push-pull panning vibrato in real time. Um, and that's all con all connected to a, a expression pedal on the board, so we're controlling speed with the foot and just kind of sending it all over the room. It's they're hard panned in the house and in the ears, so it's it's pretty trippy and it makes fairly it unique. Yeah. First yeah. time I got them in the ears, I was like I felt like a cat with having its whiskers cut off. Yeah, man. Running into the wall. <laughs> when we walked in to uh, to say hi and start setting up cameras, you were working on it, and it was. I mean, there's a lot of seasicky pedals and this, yeah. that, and the other thing, but I was like, whoa. This is a real... I stood like, right between them. motion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's cool. I mean, especially with all the kind of vintage, dead center, fairly clean amp tones, it's nice to have something that you can use that is, yeah. is, is, is a little crazy. Um, yeah, and I, and I don't mean to make these sound like they're gimmicky in any way. These are big time amps and they, you know... I don't have any issue putting them next to an ODS or an old Tweed Twin. They they hold they up. Hold they hold up. Great killer, like man. I could go out with just one magnetone and play an entire tour. Yeah. And hardly anybody would know the difference, really. I've always been super impressed with them. Not only are they a great amp, but like the weird double vibrato circuit thing they do, yeah. whatever it's called. I think they it's kept nasty. what was really cool about the original magnetones. Right. And then you know basically increased. You know the 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 size of the sweet spot, as as we call it, where it's like you know at, at many volumes it sounds great. Where you go back and find a '60s magnetone, and it sounds it's, it's like that Vox. That Vox sounds so good at seven, but anything else, it's a cardboard box. Yeah. You know yeah. that's a that's a '61 AC15 with Alnico Blue. So that's like the that's the great AC15. I mean that's a very cool amp. Yeah, yeah. and it's real clean. And it was an accordion player's who, I got that at Emerald City too, and he, he endorsed Vox, so it never really got road wear, or it's still got the handle on top. I got a little sign that says, don't use the handle. Uh, but then that pro, Dumble modded that, and that, that, one, that, was, minute, yeah, that yeah. one was Dave Cobbs. That head was Dave's also, Dave gave me that head. Um, that's like a 71 maybe, does that sound right, that's Michael? That's right, I think. 71, 50 watt. This was one of the first 10 blues breakers uh -huh. um, yeah wow that is awesome yeah so that's 64 Super i think good, yeah. yeah right after the jtm 45 heads so it's still it's got white knobs uh, uh which is really hard to find um and this thing sounds unbelievable i mean it's not just like when i got it i didn't really get it for the collectability um but it had a letter the, the previous owner had a letter from jim marshall saying this is one of the first 10 combos i made you know and the only other one 
that he knew of at that time was Gary Moore's that had huh. survived from this run. Uh, this and like the uh, uh, treble booster, what's it called? Uh, Range, Range Master, Master is the most unbelievable sound. Yeah. Uh, it just, yeah, this stays home usually, and anytime I have a day when nobody's in the house, turn it up. I get the Les Paul and <laughs> get this thing cranked up and go with oh, it. Um, those are always fun days. Yeah. So, a lot of these are obviously not mic'd. Right. Are you using it for just like a stage monitoring volume? Yeah. Or something I, like no, that? I just brought them out because we're at the Ryman and I live close, and I'm like, let's bring the let's bring the amps and put them up. You yeah. know. Like yeah, Petty you live here in town, do. why not? Yeah, yeah, like Petty used to do, or Neil with the big humongous combos. I love those. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, but um, you know, if I do need, if I, if I did need to plug one of these in tonight, I could do it. But, sure. You know, I'm not really missing anything with this rig. This right. Is, this will probably be my stage rig for Ever. at least another year or two. <laughs> I change anything, you know, um, because yeah, there's nothing that I want to happen that we can't make happen. Yeah. Right, and, right. You know, and then we got to bunch of pedals you yeah know, we got a whole bunch of pedals so how much of the pedal game has changed because the to Not me a the, they They're look a, yeah they look pretty similar one thing we have added is the echo fix uh chorus echo x 3 r you've not seen those yet no is that is this new? amazing it's an australian the rack mount and they have like a freestanding unit also but it's got tapes in there oh. and it's tourable you know, it doesn't break down as often as some of your old Echoes, you know, like an Echoplex yeah. or something. Yeah. And it sounds Where fantastic. Where do you find the tape? Do they sell the tape? They sell the tape. Okay, cool, Yeah, cool. actually, that, I think you just replaced the tape today. And yeah, that one, just this you? afternoon. Yeah, and then but, how many hours do you get out of the tape before it? They say 50 to 200. Um, I usually swap it out, out around that 50, sure. 50 yeah. mark. 200 gets pretty warbly. I was going to say, if you, if you let it go too long, does it just sound like too? It starts I mean, it, disintegrating. Mm. Yeah. It's Which, cool. For, it doesn't sound bad. Yeah, keep no, the old tape so, for the yeah, studio. Totally, yeah. yeah. But yeah, we're using it right now. We're just using it for a slapback thing. So you want it clean and you just kind of want that mirror image. Maybe a little bit of that is something. And I think but, just to, say, cool as shit. to say the most ridiculous thing you could say, I think I switched the centaurs out. I think I put the yeah. gold horse in place of the silver, silver non one. horse. Yeah. Which I'm we not talked even before talk you said, about hearing the difference. I don't yeah. know. Yeah. I don't know if there's a difference. In it. That one seems a little hotter. Mm. A little bit more mid-range, maybe, maybe, but I don't know. Who knows? I'd have to defer to like JD Simo and something like that. Yeah, that guy right? has ears that I just don't. He have. does have. He does have a very good set of hearers. He does. And then we got a whole bunch of Chase Bliss. We got the still. Chase Bliss stuff that you had. I think uh, if I'm afraid to do this, I'm so scared okay. to do it because I don't want to turn a knob. So yeah, this is all stuff that we've had before. Yeah, this is all the same yeah. pretty much. The, Wait, this, maybe the tentacle is new. The stereo field, uh, the tentacle in the earlier iteration was mounted underneath the pedal oh, board. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, but we brought it back over here and there there's are a handful a secret. of... There's a secret, secret sauce. Yeah. anybody. <laughs> The you Ibanez. had that last time. Yep, that's yeah. Michael's. Yeah, Michael found that. Oh, you still that. Yeah. Is it and on, I mean, man? <laughs> everything's almost all the way to the left. It's just, just adds a little bit of room, yeah. a little bit of space. Um, yeah, the, the Hologram Electronics Microcosm, a Tennessee company. I think they're out in Chattanooga Listen, or Knoxville, one of the two. I love that thing, but you got to be pretty brave to use it. It is so unpredictable. It is. It yeah. is wild, man. I love it. It is unreal. It's I such a cool I sat down in COVID and learned how to operate four Chase Bliss pedals. <laughs> yes, that's an that accomplishment. is what I did. That's yeah, like, yeah. kind of like writing War and Peace, you know? Yeah. It took about the same <laughs> amount of time. Joel is a mad scientist, man. Yeah, like, We've said this before. Really is. Coolest guy in the world, but also like, brilliant. What, a, what a brilliant mind. Yeah, really you know? brilliant. yeah, one of those people when you're in the room with him, you feel like, it's like sitting in with Nels Klein. It's that same kind of feeling where it's like, I'm glad this guy's nice or he could make me look like an idiot at any moment. <laughs> at any moment. time, yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah. As a matter of fact, man, the first, when these, first came out at NAMM, I remember being like, holy shocking. shit. Yeah. And that thing is amazing. It sounding. is shocking. And, and this the other one one's with reverb? all the reverbs, yeah. yeah. Um, it's like the old Lexicon reverb, like the Bob Clear Mountain. You know, you yeah. could mix a U2 record with this. Right? You know. It's almost like having outboard gear. Yeah, I mean, to get this kind of, these sounds and this much stuff, it's you would need you know, half of a room in a studio in 1982. Right. You know, but now you can put it in a road case. Amazing. And control it with a foot switcher, and there you go. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Let's see. And then King of Tone, obviously, a lot of. Uh, that gets a lot of use. Yeah. Analog man yeah. stuff. And yeah. And this is like, let's see, I got Sunline. That's the first Sunline that he made, as far as we know. That's right. Um, 
Yeah, Mark Ford gave me that. Oh, and then we What's added the Cornish. With the Cornish. Yeah, we added the Cornish um, uh, optic compressor. So Corey uh, Brandon went through a little yeah he got in a phase where he he was getting he was getting in trouble buying all this Pete Cornish game. You know, yeah. and then of course I don't think any of it's on his board anymore. Right, but. Yeah, the Cornish game hand. Yeah, and then um, we we have this four knob analog man compressor for more of a, less of an effect and more of a conditioning thing, and then this is like. You know when you want to go. Is that right, or is that, did I get it backwards? Kind of backwards. Kind of. Yeah, this so, is the one. The that's... Cornish is always <laughs> on, kind of thing. Yeah, not always, but with the strats and stuff, it yeah, kind yeah. of lifts it Just to give a little... compete with the PAFs. And it retains so much top end. It's yeah. you know. Yeah, I mean it is really transparent. Oh. Ooh. I wish I was on strike from saying that word. Yeah. <laughs> True bypass um, transparent. Yeah. Yeah. Gotta love those but, uh, working words. So yeah, this one is for when you want to just hold a note and go get some lunch or whatever. Yep, fun stuff. Fun stuff. And then the Wampler, is that just may maybe a backup or was that before you got this new it's Australian a, unit? It's a backup. So the that board in and of itself with a with a couple of cable swaps can become a whole rig. Sure, the, yeah. The first three presets on, on both pedals are just kind of- Ready to rock. Ready to go, yeah. tap tempo on so the got delay. a fly date or a little something. Tuner. Sure. And it's, you know, in my head when, when I first put, put it together, it was like, if something catastrophic happened, I can throw that on the floor. Yeah, and we can play the show. Up. You lose all cabin pressure. You can yeah. just go right to that sucker. This yeah. is the oxygen mask of the room. Yeah, 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 totally. Well, let me think. Is there anything else we didn't talk about? I think we're good. Still on the Aura Spectrum. That, yeah, yeah, I still love the Aura Spectrum we're DIs. Great. They sound really good out front. And, you know, you can get loud enough. If you have to put a feedback buster in, you can do that. And... You know, I'll, I'll usually take my guitars and have them, you know, do images of those actual instruments. Well, of your actual instruments, yeah. yeah. Now, um, that Keeley Double Tracker is, is something I recently came across and it's real mm -hmm. cool. That's how, really neat. How are you using it? I use it for the slide guitar, Okay. like ADT, like George Harrison totally sounding slide. Yeah. yeah, and on miles off of weather vanes. That's what we did. We used yeah. the ADT in the studio. Sure. So the wet signal from that goes only to the magnetones, and the dry output goes to the oh, bottom cool. three amps. So it's mm -hmm. a real it is juxtaposition. A big yeah. full sound, which is nice because you know it's a single note line. So it's right. like it's the George Harrison melodic slide thing. So there's nothing. There's just one note happening at a time, and right. it kind of gives everything some heft. You know. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, even in a, a different context, that thing rules. That double tracker is almost yeah, as... Yeah, that's a cool pedal. It's a very cool pedal, man. Yeah. Robert's always on to something cool, for yep. sure. And then you're still controlling everything with RJM. Yeah. And just a couple of... Uh, Mission uh, yeah. controllers. Yeah. 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 It's pretty easy to operate. Not easy to maintain, but... That's why you <laughs> pay this guy the big bucks. Yeah. One yeah, of the hardest working men in show business, I know, right really. Yeah, and we have sort of developed all this stuff together, you know. It's, it's yeah. uh, I've just wanted something or needed some. Michael comes in the studio and helps me get tones in there, sure. and then we help. We, you know, he he figures out how to replicate them when we go on stage. And yeah, you know, I, I don't I don't tell him that it would be really hard to do this with anybody else, but it would be. Yeah, it'd be tough. <laughs> you know. um, yes, yeah, so like if if he dropped this off at my house, I would have to. FaceTime him to turn it on. Like, dude, yeah. <laughs> I mean, you have to walk me How through. do you uh, operate the flux capacitor? Yeah. yeah, I don't know which one of these sends me back to the future, Michael. <laughs> well, Jason, I can't tell you how much I appreciate you taking the time. Thank you. I love talking about this stuff with you. I know, man. Thanks I love talking about this stuff with you. Congrats on uh, Weather Vanes. Thank you. Such a rockin' record. Yeah, we got to play some guitar. It's rock and roll, man. We didn't you bring know? anybody into the room that had taste. That's what we did. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody stopped us. It was I fun. I love it, man. It I'm, I'm, a, I'm a huge fan. Well, thank you. As soon you. as Death Wish came out, I'm like, oh, yeah, that's my that shit. Yeah, was something different. That yeah, was it was totally different. different. I loved it. You know, yeah. it was so, so rad. And congrats on the Grammys. Thank congrats you. Congrats on the nomination. Thank you. Congrats on striking. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, and you know, the, 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 the strike won't last forever, so nope. one day I'll tell everybody all about that thing that I did once in Oklahoma. Yeah. Yeah. But Which I I'm talk excited about to... the songs I wrote yeah. while I was out there. I wrote yeah. a record, you know, yeah. so that, uh, that helped. Yeah. But yeah. Anyway, y'all go eat popcorn. We're I don't gonna... know where you're going to find it, but <laughs> go eat popcorn in the dark for three and a half hours. You didn't hear I, it. I, honestly, since I saw the trailer of the Unknown Unspoken uh, Project, I, yeah. I'm blown away, man. Yeah. Like, yeah. Everyone that had a hand in that is somebody I bunch really admire. Professionals. So, yeah, bunch of professionals. Some all serious the way down. pros on that. Yeah. And it's also really cool to see you 
step out. Yeah, try you some know, new stuff. Yeah. yeah, I like the day jobs. So far, I prefer the day job. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I get it. I get it. Yeah. Well, hey man, thank you so much. Yeah. Always a pleasure. Likewise. And thank y'all so much for watching. Stay tuned for more rig. Uh, actually, no, we're gonna go talk to Sadler. Yeah. Hey y'all, I'm John Bollinger with Premier Guitar. So our rig rundowns for a long time now have been sponsored by Diderio. And I'm thrilled to be using the Diderio Expand pedal board. I've got this little guy that fits in my gig bag. And like many of you, I'm changing pedals all the time. I love having a board that can shrink as I'm shrinking my board or expand as I'm expanding it. And that's why I love the Expand pedal board. Their patented telescoping technology lets me instantly change the size of my pedals playground. It also features a unique cable management system and comes fitted with loops of Velcro, keeping everything neat and easy to swap. The two expand versions comes with either one or two rows, depending on your needs. So a big thanks to Diderio. Now, let's get back to more rig rundowns. All right, guys, now we're here on this side of the stage with one of my favorite guys in the world, Sadler Vaden, and we also got Dave Brown, the one and only. <laughs> That's right, the one and only. <laughs> um, hey, man. Great to see hey, you. Hey, good to see God, you too. It's always good to see you. Um, I know you've got a couple of new things going on um, yeah. with your rig, an uh, amp world as well. But yeah. uh, I know, obviously, you probably have the number one SG. That thing seems to stick around yep. forever and ever. Yep. Before we even get into it, um, I think last time we talked, you said it was like a 2007 SG. It's a 2005. Five, right? Yeah. So like, kind of nothing on paper special about that guitar. Right, right. What is it about that thing? Um, well, I, I, well, I had a bunch of guitars stolen. I'm not sure if we've talked about that uh, no. in previous rundowns, but um, I had like a, a faded, uh, worn cherry SG. Remember those oh, faded SGs? I had SGs? one and they had yeah. the half moon. Yeah. Yeah, inlays, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, I had one of those and that was a great guitar. And uh, just, you know, on tour in the van and trailer days, you know, got ripped off. Somebody and um, and my good friend Paul Ebersold actually found that SG at, I think it was called Martin Music in Memphis. And he pulled it off the wall and played it and was like, this is a great guitar. I think Sather would uh, dig this. Yeah, yeah. Dig this. And, and he got together some funds and, um, you know, it was, a, it was a gift to me to replace the one that was stolen. So, so cool. So as, it, sentimental, as much sentimental as it yeah, is. Yeah, it's very sentimental uh, to me, but it's, um, it really is just a great instrument. Yeah. You know, and uh, that's just the thing, you know, if it's vintage or not, I mean, it just has to feel good in your hands and right. it's, it's a tool for you. So yeah, that, that one's just always been my number one, yeah. um, baby. So, and it's beautiful. It's funny yeah. that you, you bring up the, those faded SGs. Cause I remember my first like real good guitar was mm -hmm. I saved up and got one of those mm -hmm. and it played like a truck, buddy. It was awful. They like, were good. The yeah. frets would cut my hand up and it would dip. <laughs> yeah. I actually traded it on tour to some kid for an ESP because it was yeah. that bad. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you know yeah. I mean? But then again, I've, I've, I've seen some that are awesome and play great. Yeah, the so, one I had was, was great. Yeah, you know, and, and, and part of that was just, uh, you know, I didn't have any money and yeah. that's what I could get. And um, Same you know, with me. And I think it was like 800 yeah. bucks when they were new or something. It was really sure. cheap, you know. Do the best with yeah, what you have. You totally. Know? I think mine must have been made on a Friday afternoon or something. <laughs> you know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I got to get on. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, hey, uh, let's let's take a look at what we got new because I know you got some pretty cool, cool. new stuff. Do you want to start in Acoustic World or Electric World? Hey, that's up to you. All right. Well, we'll, we'll start down here with the tellies. Okay. I'll swing this way. Um, this is... Um, a I custom this, shop. This was you've seen this one I've before. I've seen this one before, and it's beautiful. Yeah, and this was based on a '51 Nocaster that I played in at uh, Emerald City, and um, it was obviously it was a it was a real '51 Nocaster. Right. So <laughs> I was like, wow, that's an amazing guitar. And I went to Fender and said, can you make me a guitar like that? And they said, sure. And and um, did they nail the neck? I, I mean, I got it a little. Um, I probably went a little thinner. Um, okay. Yeah. But uh, but I mean this this is a rock guitar yeah for sure the the I think it's the twisted Tele pickups that are still oh. in it and um, it's a great guitar it gets used every night and um, it rocks yeah love yeah. that guy so we got the Tellys here um, and this it, you've everyone's seen this one too if yep. you've seen a previous rundown this one stays in Open G. Um, I don't even know what year. I'll have to <laughs> reference old rundowns. I don't remember what year it was. Uh, but uh, Lindy Fralin did this wide range. Oh, so me. it's like one of those vintage uh, mm -hmm. Fender wide range. Yeah. Which, if I'm not mistaken, he did this one too. He did the split rail. The split rail. Yep. In the bridge there. And uh, now these are kind of like, they live somewhere between a humbucker and a single coil, right? Yeah, they do. Okay. Yeah. They do, and they get that big beefy sound. Um, and uh, this is, is this is like 
when we're doing Super 8 or, or something in OpenG and this is like no reverb, you know, Marshall, you know, just this rock is, and roll. Yeah, let's, yeah, let's rock. And um, it's just proven to be a great guitar. Yeah. yeah. It's got some good weight to it. Now, this double bound beauty here is uh -huh. got to be new. Yeah, this is new since the last one. Um, oh, that is so slick. Yeah, yeah. Um, custom telly, and uh, I think it's the aged surf green, I think, is the color. Um, and uh, I wanted a good telly that I could put a bender in. Aha, uh -huh. mm -hmm. oh, yeah. Yeah, and I, and I didn't have a custom telly. And um, so Custom Shop at Fender made oh, so this guitar. Oh, Glazer? Yeah, so yeah. I got the Glazer bender there. Um, Sweet. And... Uh, I had Joe do a long throw for me because I'm used to the Parsons. Oh, um, so and they behave a little differently, huh? Yeah, yeah. yeah so I can really get those Where? long yeah, <laughs> yeah, bends like... and everything, and those Jimmy Page moves and stuff. And um, I play this on Dreamsicle. I play this on Alabama Pines. Um, yeah, it's a great a, guitar too. Man, they nice really, and clean. really nailed the checking. Mm -hmm. Like it's obviously nitro. So cool. Yeah, yeah. But I, I, I have such an affinity for these the this era. You know, the, the mm -hmm. surf colors, I think yeah. it's so cool. And the double bound is nasty, man. Yeah, and uh, what, what uh, bridge, we had Twist Italian here, but our, our, our pickup. Uh, it just got weird. Yeah, we ended up the putting bet. in some uh, Lawler specialties. Can't go wrong with Lawler, it man. It sounds yeah. so good, yeah. man. How much of a pain in the ass is this for you to intonate and keep running with the, with the bender? Because I know sometimes it's a little tricky. You know, it took me a minute to get, like, I wasn't real familiar with, like, working on benders and then, you know, picked it up real quick and was yeah. like, it's not bad at all, man. The thing, that guitar is so stable. And man, the, the Glazer, Glazer some, design is great. Too, Glazer so. design stuff is really great. And mm -hmm. if you guys aren't hip to him, man, he uh, does the compensated bridges for like a LP style guitars. Yeah, the that music really city bridge, right? Freaking make a huge difference, yeah. man. Those things are awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So this is this is new to the fold, and it gets used a lot too. Yeah, it's a that's great beautiful. Guitar. Yeah. Now, um, that Firebird is absolutely something I have not. Yeah, this with. Is, yeah. This is new as well. Um, this is my favorite one, I think. Yeah. This is. This is our favorite one right now because it's like when you write a song and it's the, the newest song is your favorite song that you've written. So sure, this sure. is kind of landing in there. But this this is um, this was given to me by uh, Peter at uh, Asbury Park Vintage. Ah. And uh, it's a 68 Firebird. And um, I think most everything's original on it. It's pretty clean and it plays great and it actually stays in tune I've, man, these uh, are fairly just such, well. They're such wacky guitars to me. Like the break angle. Not in reverse, neck. obviously. Yeah. yeah. They're just such a weird shape. It looks like you could skate it. You know, like yeah. if you put trucks on it, you could totally skate the thing. Yeah. But then also like the, the angle on the neck is a little bit different than any other Gibson I've seen. Yeah. Such a fun shape, man. When I saw Tom Petty and Mike Campbell play these, I think it was on the uh, High Grass Dogs, like live at the Fillmore uh, concert movie they put out. I think they were both playing these, um, to my recollection, um, on like Running Down a Dream or something like that, or Jamming Me or something. I was like, that's the coolest thing yeah. ever, two non-reverse fibers. So um, this is a great guitar. This gets played two or three songs now too. And, yeah. um, what yeah. songs are you playing on this? Um, I'm playing this on uh, Death Wish, which is oh, off the new record. Sure, my favorite. Uh, I play this on Stockholm and uh, Flying Over Water right now. Very cool. Yeah, and the pickups sound amazing. Yeah, are you yeah. doing much slide work on this? Or? Uh, yeah, I get the slide out a little bit. A little yeah. bit yeah. Cause it's got remarkably yeah. low action for a slide yeah. guitar. You know what I mean? A lot it's of my guitars are pretty low. Pretty low. Like I, I, it's just something I'm used to. Yeah. Um, I don't have any guitars that are high action for slide, um, particularly. What year so. did you say this was? This is a '68. Mm -hmm. Man, it's 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 yeah. wild for such an old guitar. Like, the plastic has stayed and yeah. not lost the tip, and like just how cool, man. Yeah, the pickups really yeah. are, are what. Yeah. I mean, the neck's they great too, great. but the pickups sound and they're amazing. original, sure, right? Yeah. Um, I've never seen one that stays in tune like that one. Yeah, I've heard of people have a little bit of tr uh, tuning issues because the vibrato on that thing is like a I've little I've always weird, fought with Firebirds, and that one, it's like, yeah. once you stretch it a couple times, it's, it's good for the rest of the night. And here's another hard guitar to play. Yeah. Um. <laughs> <laughs> now, it looks familiar because you've had, uh, some, uh, I think on the last rundown, this isn't yeah. the one, though. This is a, no, this this is a is new a one, No, this is a right? different one, yeah. Um, this one uh, I found at Carter Vintage here in Nashville. And I love the uh, gold pick guard yeah, that and really, uh, the truss rock cover. The gold pick guard with the red really makes it pop. Yeah. yeah and what um, year is this? I think it's a '92. I want to say it's a '92, but it's uh, you know it's a 36012 right. fire glow and um, put some foam in here. I, I've gone over that before. Like and these were a re reissue of like a '60s guitar, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, yeah. Yep. But this this has it, it's just it's got a good neck and it's not um, super difficult. To play at least for me i'm used to playing them yeah um, now are these fully hollow or is there a center block um let's see i i think this is semi 
Um, and the foam just helps keep the foam. Out. Yeah, because I play this on 24 frames, and a lot of the, going on. Yeah, yeah. The, the lead part in that song, you know, you you got to have some gain and some compression and stuff because I'm playing slide on a 12 string. So um, I hit it pretty hard just so it's it's a big moment and it still howls though yeah. when it when it comes on but um but that definitely helps and um yeah i mean it's just yeah. look at that thing ricks are so slick looking <laughs> man it's a cool looking guitar and we're getting some checking you know because we're in canada in uh, february or whatever you know that's gonna happen um but it looks awesome yeah that's a great guitar very cool and all, all you know those pickups obviously sound super cool uh, and uh, I think this is new as well to the fold. This oh, baby, is a, what this we got is here? A, this is a, a Murphy, Murphy Lab. Oh man, um, they did a killer job. Yeah, based on the you know 59 Les Paul, and uh, that's the uh, aged lemon, I think. Oh. It's a finish on that. Really um, cool. Have you but, looked real close to see if you can find a signature in there anyway? I haven't. Yeah, uh, I know <laughs> he puts them in there. Yeah, sometimes. Uh, but um, but yeah, I mean, the, I, I love how it kind of turns sort of green down here and. Um, yeah, I just I picked this up at the Gibson Garage here in town, yeah. and um, was like, yeah, that's that's the one. And um, now I wonder how true to spec they're using. I mean, because obviously there's a lot of materials you can't get any longer, and I know those guys are pretty meticulous about trying to dial it in as, as, as close to possible. But from what I understand, a lot of the finishes back then had like metal oxide in them to give them some sort of like the old gold tops, for example. Right. I think they had some sort of copper or something, which is why greeny is green because you know over time, sure, that yeah. shit just breaks down. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, I, I would. I, I'm so curious to know what they would use because that top is so cool. And I, I, I like um, the relic jobs out there now. Like I personally, they nail it. I, I like yeah. them. You know, I mean, I'm gonna beat them up anyway, but it looks great. Plus, and, it's not um, like an inappropriate relic job. It's not like no, no, over the top. You know, yeah. it, it looks like it would. Yeah. You know. I forget what um, uh, age level it is. Like there's like there's ultra heavy. Yeah. I, it's, this might be. You know, medium or heavy or yeah. something. I, I can't remember. Um, you know, once again. When I'm picking out a guitar, I'm I'm going yeah. on. Does this feel good to me right. rather than than all those than things? Stuff, so yeah. yeah. Um, the only time I think that you know drag behind a truck thing looks right, good yeah, yeah, is right. if it's a backup for like Kenny Wayne Shepherd or something like his. Sure, sure, he has yeah. like an identical Strat that looks just like it's been to war and back, you know. Yeah. But yeah, that man, what a beautiful beautiful yeah. instrument. And this is you know this gets played on like Honeysuckle Blue and. Uh, Children of Children, mm -hmm. and um, what other songs do I play this on, Dave? Like Decoration Day. Yeah, Decoration Ooh. Day, it comes out. Um, yeah, and then, you know, some nights it's just like, hey, just give me a Les Paul. Oh, Cast Iron Skillet. Cast Iron, play. yeah. yeah. This was uh, Ebo. What pickups did they go with in this? Um, they're those, um, like, custom wound, um, they're not burst buckers, buckers. I don't think. But, it's like but a, they're like custom. Is it like yeah. a Murphy Lab pickup? Yeah, oh, okay, yeah, I cool. think so. Um, they're like custom buckers <laughs> or whatever. Um, I think that's what it is. But. Are they PAFE? Yeah, they yeah, are. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd say they're they're a little hot, but I mean, um, not not like. I've noticed know. in our past rundowns, almost every guitar you have, you're like, pickups are a little hot, but I like it. The yeah, pickups yeah. are a little hot, but I like it. <laughs> also, you guys are both both you and Jason are like, oh, the middle position in this guitar. Yeah. The middle position in yeah, this yeah. guitar, it's like, yeah. I, I see y'all. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I got yeah, your yeah. number. It's yeah. like. But this one, yeah, yeah. I mean, you're ready to rock. You yeah. get the less ball. Man, that's a rock. You, know, you gotta and roll have a good less ball, you know. Too cool. Um, all right, so. Everyone that's seen our rig rundowns knows this guitar, and we were talking about it earlier. Sure. Uh, but yeah, this has always kind of been my number one since 2005, and I think I heard finally this was called the Natural Burst oh, uh, okay. finish because yeah. it was hard to find for years. I'd be like, "What was it?" Because you don't know like, what you're looking for. Yeah, you yeah, don't know how to like, search it. Yeah, I'm like honey, something or whatever, sweet tea, whatever. Maybe, you know? Yeah, it yeah, could be that. Yeah. You know? um, I just call it brown. So um, <laughs> good old Tennessee Brown. Guitar. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, this was uh, this has just always been um, tried and true sure. guitar that just sounds great, and I love the neck on this guitar. And what Duncan um, is in here? So yeah, this is a '59 Duncan in the neck and Pearly Gates in the bridge. Pearly Gates, yeah. Yeah, and that combination on an SG or, or even a Les Paul or sure. any guitar, um, I find to be a, a winning partnership sure um but yeah, yeah you know this guitar has seen a lot do you and, remember what um, you paid for it because <laughs> I, I remember they I, weren't like crazy expensive guitars they're well, just this like, was also a gift you know right, so right. um i'm not sure what what this was going for but um yeah it's great i mean this guitar definitely just feels like an extension sure. of me when i have it and i yeah. play this on cover me up and uh, i used to play it on decoration i used to play it on every song it's the only guitar i had man <laughs> yeah. so i love guitars but there's nothing like your first like real guitar like the one that yeah. you really learned to play guitar yeah. on you pick that sucker up and it's like 
Yeah. Damn, that's what's up. That's, you feel like you're at home or something. You yeah. Know? Yeah. So, um, yeah, this is just, you know, I've got the same strap it's had on mm -hmm. there for years. And, you know, I like I like keeping things around sure. that, that uh, you know, if you don't need to get rid of it or change it, don't change yeah. it. You know, don't change what's working. So it's my baby right there. With that right said, there. you changed it up. Yeah, with that, said, with that said, you got to have more SGs. Yeah. You can't just have one SG. You can't just have one. So, yeah, this one um, was purchased uh, last year uh, from Chicago Music Exchange. And uh, Andrew and John over there. Um, Help me uh, do some SG shopping. This is a 63 SG Les Paul. So this was this was kind of my first vintage ah. uh, purchase there. Um, so out of curiosity, so, how does it feel compared to? The neck's a little thinner. Okay. Oh really? Yeah. Huh. And I and I don't mind that. I like that. It's a really easy guitar to play. Does it dip on you at all? Um, I wonder if the neck being thinner helps with that. It definitely. Got, yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. <laughs> it, it, yeah. It definitely they'll, does. They'll that. definitely do that on you. And I will say that 05 one is very balanced actually, but yeah. this one has Grovers on it, so that's going to be a heavier. Yeah. You know, and it doesn't have anything back here. Like you can see where they it must have had a trapeze or something on it, maybe. Yeah, I don't know what they or the I don't know what came on the 63. Maybe the the Maestro or something right, the, on there. Yeah. The tremolo piece. Is that what that was from? Yeah, yeah just they just filled in. it in, yeah. Um, and it had a heel crack and everything, and they did some overspray. Um, but, you know, Grovers are... So not precious, but a player, for sure. I mean, definitely a, a player grade, yeah. yeah. And, and I tried like three or four, and there were some that were, um, you know, that had patent numbers and real PAFs and things like that. But this one sounded the best and felt the best to me, and it turned out to be the cheapest one out of the... <laughs> out of the bunch. It's like Christmas. But, yeah, but <laughs> it doesn't have original pickups. Um, you know it has original it? wiring and all that, but these are the uh, uh, high voltage pickups, the Angus Young high oh, voltage. Oh, like the signature pickups. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's great. And they sound incredible. I mean, they compress nicely and they're actually not that hot. Oh, really? Yeah. You would think high voltage Angus Young, ACDC, they're going to be like, oh my God. Output, yeah. yeah, and they're wax pot and everything like that, yeah. but I think he worked with Seymour Duncan pretty closely to make sure you know, they sounded like the real thing. The team over um, at Duncan is so meticulous in the custom shop, man. It's amazing. They're great. And Shout um, out to MJ and, and, and all those guys over there. You're awesome. Yeah, I love Seymour Duncan. And, um, you know, I thought about trying to uh, source some old pickups, but if it these works, sound great. Yeah. So I'm, I'm kind of that way. I'm just like, I, I use my ears. And, you know, if they sound great, why change it, you know? So. It's good enough for Angus, I'm sure. Yeah. You know. Yeah, and I mean you have to put wax pot. He yeah. has to have some potting in there because he's got it's gonna, stacks of marshes behind him. Marshall has or something going. Yeah, the whole time. I so. love that this is a new addition for this tour cycle because Weather Vanes is such a rock record, man. Yeah, you know what definitely. I mean. It's yeah. just as sad, and I love it just as much. But it's like freaking rocking, man. There's uh -huh. so much petty on it. There's just so much Americana rock. I, I, I love it, and well, thank this you. seems like one that would really do it. You know, were you using this in the studio at all? I didn't have this when you we, didn't have we it did yet? the record yet, Michael. Well, back and forth. Oh, there he is. Yeah, well, uh, I played Jason's old SG on This Ain't It, but what year is that? Is that 61? 61. Yeah. Uh -huh. So Pretty close then. Yeah, yeah so yeah. I play this on um, the song This Ain't It. Okay. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. what's funny is he plays his the SG that I played in the studio. On the same song? Sometimes. You guys are double <laughs> SG-ing it up? Yeah, sometimes. That's cool. Yeah. <laughs> or he'll play Red Eye or something like that. Yeah, but yeah. yeah. But That's cool. one, this is a wonderful guitar, and it does things that that one doesn't. You know, they, sure. they're not the same. Um, but uh, yeah, the you know, like I said, the pickups in this sound amazing. So yeah, yeah pretty clean. Rules. That's yeah. great. I think All this right. Strat might be a new addition. No? Yeah, this 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 Strat is a new addition for me, but not to the group because this oh, is. Oh, uh, I remember this. This guitar. is Jason. Yeah. So. Um, I'm currently the steward of this guitar, um, <laughs> but uh, but you know uh, Jason's gotten some great strats recently, and um, it's a '65. The, love the green pickguards, man. And uh, yeah, that that green pickguard's amazing. And um, so uh, origi we, originally in '65, that would have been like just all white, right? This is like an age thing. Is that how they kind of yellow like that? I have no idea. I'd be curious. Jason to know. would know. Yeah, Jason would know but, for sure. But um, but yeah, we were in Vegas at Soundcheck one day, and he said, "Hey, man." Uh, you know, I just got some some strats and things like that. But but why don't you uh, why don't you take this and and play it, use it, and um, you know I'll get it back from you if I need it back and all that stuff. And, and you know it lives out here, yeah. so um, he can grab it anytime he wants. But uh, it's become a great slide guitar. Actually, I use it on Last of My Kind and uh, sometimes traveling alone. And oh, um, Capo Two. Yeah, Capo cool. Two. Yep. And. Um, you know, and you got to find the. This is a, oh, a three-way. Oh, it's got. You got to get in the so fourth. I gotta, yeah. So I always try to. Dave usually tries to find that for me. 
uh, before he steps out. Here's so. a question for you, maybe you could answer. Sure. What I've never understood is on, on, on these old ones, when you're in this position, uh, there's no tone control, which you would imagine with the barkiest, brightest ear. Yeah, you would want pickiest, to be able to like, That's the one that you would down. want the tone right. control yeah. on, right? Like, that's kind of weird. Yeah. But, so you're, you're just kind of trying to find it in there to, to do that. Yeah, so I, f I find that out of phase. Yeah. Spot right there. Boom. Um, which, uh, Knopfler. Boom. Yeah, yeah, Knopfler, yeah. boom. And then, and then as we kick up, I'll go to the bridge. To get a but little. But then I'll go to the neck as we even kick up more because the neck. It's such um, a sweet position. Yeah. yeah, and it gets real thick. Yeah, and if I'm up here, pretty. I go to the neck. Yeah. And then kind of, and then once again, in real time, trying Man. to find my spot. And, you know. So. Even on shredder guitars, I love like an HSS because that neck, single coil neck position always just sounds so pretty it does you know? it does so yeah this you know um i wow. appreciate jason letting me be the steward of what this a guy guitar. jason yeah, yeah, good looking yeah, out dude yeah <laughs> so great then, guitar uh, there what's this ingve situation over yeah. here <laughs> <laughs> it's exactly that oh it's uh, got, yeah look at the front turn the fog <laughs> machine <laughs> turn the fog machine up to to so when uh, we get to your board we're definitely going to see a switch that turns yeah, a fan on to blow yeah, your hair right ludicrous yeah. speed <laughs> um this was funny because um i think actually jason Found this on Reverb, 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 and texted me. He was like, "Dude, this is a killer deal." Um, and it was, um, I think it's the it was Japanese made. Yeah. Uh, ah. Strat. Those were yeah, very, very body. sought after. And um, and it was just a great deal. I was like, man, you know, I, I got on there and and bought the guitar what, what and the year, neck, you know? um, ninety seven ah. or something like that, late nineties, um, and. Uh, it came and I just was playing the neck and everything. I was like, love the guitar. It sounds good, but the neck is not where I want it to be. And I called Ben at Fender and he, he sent me a, a new American neck. Standard oh, Strat neck. So we great. put the new neck on there. Um, and it and fit then perfect and everything? Fit perfect. Yeah. Dave put it on yeah, it and it transformed the guitar. You didn't and, have to shim the neck or nothing? No. Damn. And then once again, these are Seymour Duncan, um, what are they called? Psychedelic. <laughs> oh, weird. <laughs> but yeah. they're, they're out of the custom shop. Huh. So their their custom shop, uh, Seymour and Duncan, Seymour Duncan pickups. So I, know, so. I, I heard this. Uh, I was trying to. I saw. I was in a uh, Nashville used music, and I saw like an '80s um, telly that I really wanted to buy, and it was a Japanese telly. And I went out to check my bank account and came back in, and some kid had already bought it. But what I've heard is that one of the reasons those are such great guitars is when Fender retooled their American factories and opened up a factory in Japan, they sent all their old machines and old woodstock and all of that stuff to Japan. So like a lot of those, you know, early, you know, when they started making the Japanese guitars, that's one of the reasons they're so great is because that yeah. wood was so old and like those are the exact same machines that were making tellies and strats in America, you know, so yeah. I always thought that was kind of interesting. I don't sense, know how yeah. true that is, but that's mm -hmm. kind of the word around. These pickups sound yeah. great too. The, I mean, so once again, shout out to Seymour Duncan for yeah. making awesome stuff. But, um, but yeah, I play this on Traveling Alone sometimes. I play this on Life You Chose. Not a ding um, honor. Yeah, well, well, we got one oh, new yeah, one, one right there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah there you go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you gotta have some road dings, yeah. you know. So, you know, um, yeah, that's that. that. So that's, that's the electrics. To, uh, acoustic land. Yeah. Yeah. You wanna start with the old one or the new one? Um, we can start. Let's start with the J two hundred. Okay. We'll, yeah. So this is uh, this is not an old J two hundred, but this is a few years old, and um, this has just been great. Cause I'm a J two hundred fan. I mean, I love you know Pete I love Townsend. Them. I love them. They're big. The whole thing, and and for my you know my height and everything yeah, like, yeah. it doesn't look like crazy big on me or anything like that it's um, funny when you see a little guy playing them because right, they yeah, just yeah, swallow yeah, it yeah, up yeah, yeah, yeah. it looks like a it looks mariachi band or something you know uh but yeah this this is you know gibson hooked me up with this um when we were hitting the road a couple years ago and um it's been a, a wonderful guitar and it's got the lr bags anthem system in there that i really love man um anthems I think it's, are great yeah i think it sounds great and this is perfect for you know against jason's uh martin's and stuff um, and we're both playing acoustic yeah, yeah and it just it's like a stereo image right. like super wide sounding and then i play this on overseas i play this on vampires uh middle of the morning anything i play acoustic sure. um but on overseas you know the j200s with that attack it's nice because i'm basically percussion it's really so rhythmic yeah yeah, yeah, yeah yeah so it yeah. really gets that attack and um plus i always nice. love that like the appointments on these yeah oh it's yeah pretty it's damn a, loud. yeah i mean it's opened up yeah, it's yeah. good. So it's just fun to just be, be a windshield wiper, yeah. you know, on that thing. <laughs> um, and Man. then this I just got, and um, Love old hummingbird. you know, Eesh. Murphy Lab. This is oh, the really? brand new Murphy Lab Hummingbird. Dude, and, had me um, fooled. Yeah, and 
this thing is is crazy cool. So cool it sounds amazing once again the lr bags anthem system in there and i mean yeah it plays wild horses for you like when you get it, you're just like, <laughs> oh yeah it's like you know uh but yeah it's it's great it's a great guitar Man. and uh so i've been kind of swapping them out and yeah, now right. we have two out here in case one goes down oh just so, as a backup yeah yeah, yeah. sure yeah but Man. this thing when we plugged it in at sound check and i you know dave and i both looked at each other we're like Okay. Oh, okay. I like, yeah. Oh. yeah, you know, because it's like, it's, um, I, I think they've already just kind of been opened up and, sure. and, um, so at the yeah, Murphy Lab with the acoustics, are they doing the, like the, whatever, it's all proprietary terms, but like, uh, torrified tops or whatever? So, yeah. yeah. Cause that really yeah. does, man. I oh, mean, yeah. it makes quite a bit of difference. Oh, yeah. You know? Yeah. And it just already has like yeah. age on it and doesn't have, you know, that, that, um, thick or whatever that lacquer is, is on, you know, clinches them up, man. Yeah. You almost yeah. want nitro on something like yeah, this because it so, is. Yeah. Yeah. So it just it just came out of the case like already kind of gotcha. opened up and everything. So All right. it's a wonderful acoustic. Before we move on to some cool new things in your amp setup, um, strings and gauges. Uh, are you running pretty much the same strings and gauges on all electrics? On on everything. Okay. Um, and they're uh, they're the green Ernie Ball. Yeah. yeah. Just the tens. Gotcha. Um, what are we using on acoustics though? We using ah. the Martin strings. <laughs> that's right yeah yeah i mean they're great how thick are we though 12, 12 that's 12. what i yeah. thought yeah. yeah i like light yeah yeah i like yeah. I, I like a little bit of lighter but too. i mean i'm playing you know i'm doing a lot of rhythm stuff yeah, I, totally. I just honestly i want i like acoustics to be easy to play yeah, yeah. <laughs> i don't really like picking them up and having to work too hard you yeah know? man yeah that's why i play guitar for a living you know? <laughs> so uh but yeah, yeah and um oh the j200 too we use that on tour of duty uh, oh, yeah. when me and Jason go out there and we do the the you know the old hillbilly the dueling thing uh, hillbilly thing yeah. yeah and the J two hundred is great for yeah, that too totally. so yeah well uh, let's go take a look at some amps let's do it all right all right Sadler <laughs> we know all about the British dream it's killer Delana everything she touches is freaking gold I love it I've heard that box which doesn't seem to be in the chain right now but it does look cool it's in the chain oh it is um, okay. it's not mic'd up I kind of like some lights will use it as an extra you know monitor. stage ball yeah, yeah monitor uh, but yeah 65 pacemaker all tube i've got three of them now so if you need one all two uh, versions yeah yeah because they made them solid state too, they did they? make yeah, them yeah. solid state and I've, I've actually never played a solid state I'd i kind curious. of i'm curious yeah, yeah some solid state amps sound great kick ass so yeah. um but yeah that's all tube. you know uh, we got the hand wired ac30 here um that i do i do still use sometimes um and uh, that sounds great too. It's got the Alnico blue speakers in it. Um, and this one has, I had to get rid of the uh, original speaker because, you know, I drive it and they're not, it you know, flopped it, right it, out yeah, on it flopped yeah. right out. So I got a Weber, uh, was it a Blue Pup yeah. Uh, yeah. Weber tin in there? Um, and that sounds great. Um, and obviously, like you said, the legend, the Love stream it. is still, like I said, I don't, I don't change anything. I mean, that, I would say that, that amp, you know, it's been with me for 11 years and um, it just, you know, great. I just love it, yeah. you know. Um, All her so, stuff is so, man, everything I've heard in person is kind of mind blowing, man. It's well, like, thank you. Yeah, I, I love those amps. Just, yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah, Del and Delana, yeah, is, is like, she is so amazing and so smart. And um, yeah, so, um, and then, yeah, I just got this. Uh, I, this time last year, I got this over at Carter and um i think jason was actually looking at this and uh i got I beat him to it uh don't tell him he's right there um but yeah this is a they said 67 68 j and p but i think it's like the the um it's kind of in the black flag era sure. plexi and uh i actually i didn't bring it out for a while after i got it he's just afraid to i don't know yeah I just, it was just like i don't know like you know getting it on the road and all that kind of stuff and then uh, Jason kind of tossed me into it and said, look, are you going to go through your life? You know, you're not a doctor. You know, <laughs> right. You're a guitar. You know, you play guitar for a living. You're going to go through your life knowing you never took a plexi out on the road. You can't stable like, all the horses, man. I was you like, gotta, yeah, you're right. <laughs> yeah. So, and it sounds awesome. It's 50 watts. And I've got it attenuated with the uh, Weber Mass 200 here. And... Um, and this is just a mystery uh, 212 cabinet, and uh, Dave did the great artwork gonna, there. In a and, pinch, um, that's, a, that's a pretty good Marshall logo. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it didn't have a logo on it when we got it, so we just Love thought it. we would we would uh, put one on there. So, what about this Vox? Are you playing this at all? 
Yeah, this box is um, it's just up here because we, we wanted to fill out the stage this year and, and have a bunch of amps laying around. It looks killer. Um, but I love, this is the AC30 custom head uh, and cab. And I use this a lot actually in the studio Jungle and at Master. home. Sure. And um, I haven't used it live ever uh, in this band, but I was really impressed when it came. I was like, wow, this thing sounds very good. Um, and I love a box head and cab. That's yeah. just a sexy look. So, um, and then we've got the Marshall 412 cab back here. And this rig is a, a, what Dave calls tone hinge. And so we have a little. Uh, oh, little tiny stone little, hinge up there. Little tiny stone hinge up there. That's good. Um, and I bought that Marshall. It already had the hole in it. So. Rock and roll. Uh, I, I was like, I have to get that. Speaker so, okay? Yeah, the speakers are. Yeah, the speakers are great. I think they're the. Um, the uh, 90s uh, greenbacks oh, cool. in there. So it's yeah, a great sounding cab. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah great right sounding cab. Love your, uh, love your tone hinge. Yeah. Um, and there's not that many changes to your board, but let's go take a look. Yeah. All right, Sadler, pretty similar setup. Yeah, some new new toys on there. A couple new things. Uh, M5, as opposed to the, right. the, yeah, the yeah, big line six. Yeah, got the M5 on there. Um, yeah, once we were uh, redoing the board, because I wanted a, I used to have the a walrus switcher and that was great. I, I did that for many years. Um, but then some friends like Peter Stroud and, and some other folks were using this gig rig system. They're awesome. And um, I got in touch with Daniel Steinhardt over there and was like, hey, I'm, I'm interested in this and I needed to know more about it, you know, because yeah. I'm kind of dumb when it comes. I, I needed to know how, well, I needed to know the ease of use sure. of it, right? And uh, he was like, mate you can do whatever you whatever you want like you can make it as difficult or as easy as you want i was like okay great so i added the g3 switcher and um it's just been it's been awesome because i'm, I'm able to do a couple of well i just have one setting where multiple things come on at once um but uh it just gave me a lot more options rather than having like sure. four or five switches um so that's added. That freedom and, is so uh, cool too, because you're not. It's a lot of pedals to da dance around. Yeah, you know? so for you... sure, for sure. Um, and so once we added that, the big blue, uh, yeah, MM4 yeah. or what? Yeah, that that had to go. But I still love those, the, I... that uh, era of Line Six. Me too. And uh, I mean, these things are like 150 bucks, and so we have the MIDI going there, and everything in here is um, modulation. Sure. Yeah. So I've got the Leslie trim. Pitch vibrato. I think this is a flanger in here right now. I do a stereo delay on this 24 frame setting. And then this is a phaser. Uh -huh. And then I've got the expression pedal where I can change sure. change the yeah, uh, speed. The M5 and, and the M9 are criminally underrated. Yeah, they are. You know, they, they, sound, they sound great. Yeah. Um, so that's that. And uh, let's see a couple new things. You know, Analog Man delay is not new, but that's, that's still there. I love the Strymon Blue Sky. Um, but I just added this Analog Man comp that I love. And then I got this in um, Oslo, Norway. And this is a Danish made pedal. And uh, Nordvang is the name of the, the company. Yeah. And this is called a number one signature. And it's kind of like, I would say it's probably what they're trying to do with like a, like a Klon type thing but sure. um i don't really get that from it necessarily but you, i just plugged it in and i liked it and um and you kind of got it like a clean boost almost yeah pretty clean it, it's a nice it has that mid Pump. mid boost yeah. though that that's really cool and you can get some real like kind of mike campbelly things like it, it'll cut like when you're when you're doing a big octave bend or, or something like that um and then uh obviously king of tone is still sure. there love the career light speed still there um and uh and then just added this uh i forget the name it's crowther audio crowther it, audio i've seen this a couple times what exactly is it made they're made in new zealand i believe but this is called the prunes and custard harmonic generator intermodulator um right now it's sure. like a it's a it's a really uh wild sort of fuzz thing that happens like, an octave like fuzzy kind of like it, it 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 modulates though um, and it and it's really sensitive to attach, touch? yeah, yeah, to touch. So um, I want to say I heard that Jeff Tweedy used this pedal on a Ghost Is Born. I don't know if that's huh. true or not. I'm not trying to start any rumors, but um, 
I think the song Hell is Chrome, I heard that from a friend that that was like that tone. I haven't been able to find that exact tone on there, but I use this on a song called King of, King of Oklahoma Love and, that song. Um, and a song called Miles that in the studio I used an old Vox Grand Prix that had the built-in fuzz oh, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. for this big line that I played in, in that song. And so the Prunes and Custard is definitely um, a great new addition. And um, yeah, if you can if you can find them, I, I would definitely get one because they're really fun yeah. and they do a lot. Like, I mean, just turn the knobs a little bit each way and it's gonna give you a, a new sound. And um, yeah, it's pretty That's cool. You can't really tame it, which is what I like about it. You don't really know what you're gonna, get yeah yeah some nights so which that's that's kind of the fun of yeah. it yeah and uh this is boring stuff but the laylee volume pedal is awesome right. <laughs> yeah and the magnetic you know part of it and everything so yeah that's it well, that's it for the electric part we oh, have yeah, one that's secret right. yeah. pedal which i think yeah whoa. yeah yeah the jerry blaster um uh, yeah this was a pedal given to me by reeves gabrels <laughs> How cool and, is that? Yeah, yeah. And, uh, <laughs> Gotta save the best for last. That's a cool story. Yeah, and uh, his friend uh, makes these, and it's meant to be the 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 Strata Blaster, or whatever they call it, for Jerry Garcia. You know, to give him a little bit of a boost. And I use that on White Beretta sometimes with a Tele. Cool. Um, and um, yeah, you just kind of cut it on whenever if you want a little. You know, it adds a little just sheen. A little something, something. Yeah, a little something, something. And um, you know my cord pitch black is still there. <laughs> Old school. Sorry, baby. guys. Most of the stuff's still there. <laughs> yeah. And then for acoustics, you just running the bags venue. Yeah. So the acoustic world is is kind of fun because I saw um, I was watching a, an episode of Austin Sea Limits and I saw Beck on Austin Sea Limits and he plugged in his acoustic and it was like the best thing I had ever heard. I was like, wow, what what is he doing? And we were at Byron Bay Blues Fest in Australia. And I ran into Beck backstage and he was so nice and I got to talk to him and I immediately was like, what's up with your acoustic sound, you know? And he has that, what is it called? The sunrise pickup in the sound hole. Oh, okay. It's yeah, like yeah. the black pickup that goes in the sound hole. But that's that's not it though. He has the frap system, oh. um, which, he, which he told me is a Neil Young um, right. thing that you I don't think you can get. They don't make that anymore. anymore. Yeah. Um, but I feel like the LR bags, Anthem and stuff is kind of, you know, a newer version of, the, of the frat. Yeah. And, um, but he did tell me he has like a Neve copy preamp or something like that. That'll so I thought, okay, well, I should do something in my line to, to give it some sort of tube, you know, just some warmth. And so I just bought one of those ART tube preamps. Is it like 12 x 7 in there or something? I think so. Yeah. And they're, I mean, they're like 150 bucks. And it has changed everything. Really? Just just hitting a tube before you go into your your preamp, which I'm using the the LR bags venue now, which I love because I love the EQ sure. on it. I can really notch things out. Um, but yeah, I think I think just going, you know, I might add some more stuff to put in front of it. But I think just if you can get something to go in front of your um, preamp, it definitely helps. It warms things up sure. a bit. Yeah. I mean, it's so. historically very hard to get a even a great guitar to sound like a acoustic, acoustic are, to sound even like a shitty acoustic. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's if you found a way around it, yeah. that's, that's awesome. Yeah. Well, so. hey, man, I can't tell you how much I appreciate you taking the time. Thank you, Perry. It's great to see you. Me uh, too. You hear they're testing the PA, so we probably need to uh, get out of here because the doors. Out. Yeah, the doors are about to open. But thanks so much for watching. We really appreciate uh, you taking the time to tune in, and we'll see you real soon. I've had, if we counted them, probably seven bad D'Addario strings in. 30 years. The reason we only stock D'Addario strings is because D'Addario strings are perfect. It's nice to be able to depend on something. <laughs>